How's it going, everybody? Landon with the Truck Boss Show. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode. As always, next to my friend, Isela. Hola, muchachos. ¿Qué tal? Don't you love that? Don't even know what she's saying, <laughs> but I'm thinking it makes sense. It does. So, I'm saying hello in Spanish. That's right. Okay, got it. Now I'm bilingual. Perfect. Now you're bilingual. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, you got to learn somewhere. It's always a lot of fun to be on the yes. show with you. We always have fun. I know we do. I hope you guys have as much fun as we do. Um, but what's coming on this show, we have two awesome segments when it comes to Black Smoke Matters, as well as today is what day? Today is Valentine's Day. That's right. Oh. You better watch this and go order online something real quick. Yes, That's run to the store, sure. the nearest one to you, it doesn't matter. That's it, whatever <laughs> it takes. It's Valentine's Day. It's make the it, thought that counts. And make it great. That's all I there gotta say. Go. Um, but at the beginning of every show, we like to do what? We like to let you know, inform you of what's going on in the industry with the latest headlines and the latest news. <laughs> That's right. We've got two important things to, to be able to do share. We do really important ones, and I think it is going to, I think they're very surprising. Well, no, not really. I think it's just. Both are very important and, and as well as interesting. Yes. So I'll go first if you don't mind. No. That's right. When Please it comes don't. to. <laughs> <laughs> like sorry, that. I have a lot of fun as we see. Uh, but when it comes to um, ELDs, important topic, we've discussed ELDs on the Truck Boss Show quite often. And what's neat about this is that an article came out when two universities came together and did extensive research about the impact since the mandate went into effect. So I want to share a little bit about that with you. The, um, let me go back up here. A group of research, researchers this month issued a report on the effects of e-logs. They reached two main conclusions. The use of ELDs has not reduced the rate of truck crashes, but it has increased the frequency of speeding violations, particularly among the small carrier segment. So what this boils down to, and we're going to drop this link into the comment thread so that you can read. It's a, quite a lengthy article, but there's three things that really happen here. When it comes to speeding violations and unsafe violations, because you're being tracked on the ELD itself, yes, of course you're trying to make up uh, lost time for productivity. The second one is hours of service. ELDs have made a good impact on hours of service where we've seen a decrease across the board in the percentage of hours of service or being put out of service across the board no matter what the carrier size is. And on the last one, a big, big debate about this is, is it actually making a difference on the crash rates? This research says it's not. If anything, the crash rates have gone up because of the unsafe driving and the speeding violations, which makes sense. And so let me read this last part to you. Despite the apparent lack of safety benefits of the mandate for the time period studied by the researchers, they point to reduced paperwork, information availability to inspectors and carriers and pressure on shippers and receivers to be more efficient in cutting delays for drivers as positive aspects of the mandate. So you can see a lot of information here in this research in this awesome article. We're going to drop it in the comment thread so you can read the full details and we would love to hear from you. Do you think ELDs are making a positive impact or a negative impact in the trucking industry? Landon, let me tell you that ELD has been a big topic here in the, I would say, for a good while now uh, for quite and it's going to be interesting to know what they come they end up you know what the decision is going to be that's right um i mean of course a lot of people have different opinions right. some people and agree some don't before you jump into your headlines here remember back in january 31st we actually brought to you exclusively the two bills that are actually hitting uh, the house right now yes. on capitol hill that could eliminate elds for agriculture as well as those with 10 trucks or less. So we'll see where that goes. So if you didn't see that, go to January 31st on our Facebook page or on YouTube. You'll see that exclusive information um, that you'll find very interesting. And again, we wanna hear from you on this topic. Is it positive or is it negative? You let us know. Yes, I love the feedback from the, the drivers, the truck drivers that are actually on the road right. who I, you know, like I said before, they have their own opinion in regards to the LD. So it's interesting to hear what they all this have to say. This was the interesting part, but you have some important information. But yes, we're going to switch it up. Now, as insane as it's going to sound, truck recalls. Nearly 15,000 trucks manufactured by Packard and Daimler in auto, auto car are being recalled for various defects. According to the recent documents from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Packard is recalling approximately 6,857 Kenworth and Peterbilts tractors for an issue with the seatbelt assemblies. The company says seatbelt seat belt buckles assemblies in the affected trucks may have been glued and not sewn during the manufacturing, possibly causing the assembly to come apart in the event of a crash, which that is scary. Affected trucks include model 2018 Kenworth T680 and T880, and the model year 2018 Peterbilt 567 and 579. Now, 
Daimler's recall affects approximately 6,795 freight liners and Western Star tractors, entities equipped with certain Eaton electronic clutch actuation heavy-duty truck clutches. The company says an international component in the clutch assemblies could fail, possibly resulting in unattended vehicle movement affected truck models include 2018 through 2019 freight liners and 2018 and 2019 West Star, Western Star. Auto Car also announced it is recalling approximately 1,003 model year 2019 Expediter trucks due to an issue where the universal joint strap bolts and the, at the transmission output yoke may not be properly tightened. If these bolts are loose, the straps may disconnect from the truck and the drive shaft could detach. Now, Landon, that sounds insane. That is scary just to think that you could be on the road, That's your right. seatbelt's not functioning. You see my face? I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> that is, is that is insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, safety is very, very important. So right. we are going to be sharing the link below. If you don't, you know, you know, you want to make sure which trucks are the ones. There's, it's going to be detailed That's information right. so you can see if your truck is one of them. Absolutely. So. As you can see, that was a lot of news. I'm a glad lot. you bared with us. Yes. Uh, so we're going to go from the news. From the news to something very sweet. That's right. Hold on. You're, see, I'm oh. going first. Oh, not you. oh. That's, that's for sure. Always wants to go first. I okay. know. It's supposed to be ladies go first. He's not on the truck boss show. I see that. So, you, he thinks he's the boss. Okay, I, and then? Yeah. As you know, on the Truck Boss Show, we've had the opportunity to be able to learn more about a group called Black Smoke Matters. And it's a nationwide movement of independent owner operators, company drivers, as well as uh, small carriers that are wanting to make a change in the industry when it comes to six specific topics. I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the founders, one of the administrators, Brian is his name, who is also a company owner, has a few trucks himself, and is leading this cause with others and almost 30,000 other truck drivers in an April 12th shutdown. So the question I asked him is, who is Black Smoke Matters? And we discussed three important topics that you'll find very interesting, and we talked the specifics behind the April 12th shutdown. So check this interview out. How's it going, everybody? Landon with the Truck Boss Show. Thank you so much for joining us on this special segment here this week. I'm very thankful to be next to someone I'm getting to know really well, Brian Hutchins of nice Black Smoke you. Matters. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for your time. Well, we're going to talk about a growing popular, what you're probably seeing online, when it comes to a group called Black Smoke Matters. And we're going to dive into what that group is all about and more. But before we do that, Brian, if you don't mind, share, um, you're not just a leader of Black Smoke Matters. You actually are an owner operator and a business owner yourself. I am. My, my wife and myself, we actually own a small company out of Arbor, Oklahoma. And I'm second generation. Uh, my mother started back around 1980. And I've been in you know, about 18 years, my wife and I have. We run uh, two trucks here, and we primarily run uh, step deck and flatbed around this area. Oh, wow. So you're definitely staying busy? Uh, we try to. And you've, uh, you've driven a few miles? A few, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is for sure. For those who are watching and they have never heard of Black Smoke Matters, what is Black Smoke Matters all about? Black Smoke Matters has, was spawned out of April 12th in Washington, D.C., when we went up and parked on Constitution Avenue, we left there uh, a group of individuals, like-minded individuals, wanted to put together a group to where we could make it grow to start bringing back unification and integrity to the industry. So slowly we've started bringing more people on board and uh, it's truly taken off. It, it has taken off, especially these last 30 days. Yeah. One of the passions that we have with the Truck Boss Show is that we really want to dive deeper into the issues. Right. Um, I know that there's, if, if someone were to um, visit your website or go to the Facebook page, they would see the specific issues that you're advocating for. And I'd like to pull three of those out and discuss that with you, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, and the first one being ELDs, extremely popular topic. Oh, yeah. Depending on who you talk to. <laughs> um, but it's definitely getting the headlines across the board. It is. Inside and outside of the group, um, across the industry. So specifically, on your site, you share that you believe ELDs should be a choice, not a mandate for independence and small fleets. So my question to you is, why should only a certain segment of the industry get the choice to use ELDs or not? Well, because it's become quite apparent that the ELDs aren't working. Uh, there have been quite a few cases we've seen where these ELDs are burning up ECMs and engine wiring harnesses. Small owner operators can't uh, uh, take that hit. I mean, the expense that it takes to replace those parts is massive to them. Company drivers as well, they don't need the downtime when these things go down and they have to put the truck in the shop for two to three days to get this ELD fixed or maybe longer and it's happening multiple times again and again and again. Uh, one of our admins actually has a problem with hers. She can't figure out what's going on. 
the temp gauge in her truck won't work every time she hooks that ELD up. If she unplugs it, it works just fine. <clears throat> she plugs it back in, it quits again. So right. there are major issues and they're not perfected. Let's shift gears to hours of service. Uh, another popular topic. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're enjoying talking about that every day. Um, <laughs> On your site, you share that you want more flexibility with hours of service for different sectors. Right now, FMCA, FMCSA could rule on proposed rule changes as soon as March. Are you in agreement with what's currently being ruled upon? I don't agree with stopping the clock for three hours to stretch our day out. No, I do not. Um, you know, as far as them making it by March, who knows if that's a true answer because Martinez put out what last week it could be delayed by the government shutdown so it may be longer than march it might be five years it might be ten years nobody really knows mm -hmm. at this point other organizations have provo provo proposed eliminating the 30-minute rule right when it comes to changing hours of service do you like that proposed rule making change yeah nobody no driver running down the road understands the 30-minute rule it makes absolutely no sense to us because what it makes you do is if you normally would have stopped an eight on your third or fourth hour, then you're gonna to have to take two 30 minute breaks a day instead of one. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand if they're gonna mandate our hours of service and they say they give us 14 hours, then they're actually cutting another 30 minutes off. Now we're at 13 and a half because we're mandated to take a 30 minute break. Right. So you're sharing the things that um, you really don't like when it comes to the three hour flexibility and the 30 right. minute rule. What specific solutions is Black Smoke Matters or what specific solutions do you have in mind? Well, we believe they need to bring back a true split sleeper berth uh, to where these guys that are at a dock, you know, the government can't do anything about the shippers and receivers and our downtime there. And I understand that because it's private property, but give us some flexibility in our clock. If a guy's laying in his bunk for five hours taking a nap, uh, he shouldn't have to run for a little while and take another 10 hour break right after that. Let him do his five, let him finish his day, let him take a five at the end and let it reset. I mean, that's the way they did it for years, but now the system doesn't work, so they felt they need to change it. So let's move on to the third issue, if you don't mind. It's regarding drivers being at the table when regulations are being discussed or when rulemaking is being put into place. Um, why do you feel, personally, you don't have a seat at the table currently? Well, there are very few that actually have a CDL in their back pocket that are in Washington or in any lobbyist group or even in the FMCSA. Uh, the drivers go to D.C., they sit down with these people that are in leadership roles and they're brushed off and told we're working on it. And that's the only answer we continue to get. I see. Your critics say that Black Smoke Matters shutting down on April 12th is not necessary, it's ineffective, and last part, it's going to have a bigger impact on those who are uh, small in the industry and maybe even outside of the trucking industry. What do you say to them? I say to them that we've been trying the diplomatic way for more than two years, uh, actually longer than that. How, mm -hmm. how long has OIDA been trying it? How much money have they dumped into this fight to actually try to curb the things that the ATA's uh, getting pushed through up in Washington? And they can't get anything done about it. We can't get anything done about it. Uh, Black and Blue went to D.C. Uh, the Freedom Ride was before that. We've went twice. We had 10-4 on DC. Some of the guys from the ATA actually, or the uh, uh, FMCSA come down and talk to us and the Truck Safety Coalition, which we do actually agree with them on. We agree with a lot of things that the USTA puts out. And you know, they're a group that also started out of us going to DC. That's a group of guys like us. They're four drivers by drivers that are actually standing up there. But until we have people that actually understand the issues that we go through on a daily basis, then the regulations put out are not going to be actually effective. What are you specifically planning at this moment for April 12th? Uh, those things will be to come down the road. They're not going to be released at this time. The only thing I can say is General Mad Dog Mattis doesn't give out his war plan to his enemies. That's a strong analogy. When April 12th has come and gone, what is success? I think success to most of us is true unification in the industry uh, for a better cause. I don't have a problem sitting down across the table from somebody that doesn't understand my perspective and I don't understand theirs, but we have to work together to make this system work for all of us. Right now, it's, it's one-sided in the way that it's done. And if we can bring everybody to the table and we can agree on things that are being done, I think we can truly make trucking great again. Brian, can't thank you enough. I appreciate your time here and especially coming on your day off and 
I'm excited for to get to know you better. I thank you for answering my questions. Thank you so much for joining us with the Truck Boss Show. We'll see you on the next special segment. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. As you can see, it's an important topic. Here at the Truck Boss Show, I'm actually going to be out on site, um, literally doing behind the scenes interviewing, riding with Brian in a truck, and literally going to be a part of the media day that's going to be happening February 21st in Indianapolis. So I'm really excited about that. Be sure to tune in because we're going to not only have our awesome show as always on Thursday, but I'll be live on site on Facebook that you can be able to catch the action as it's happening. So we sell, I'm extremely excited about this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pumped about seeing a group that is passionate about a certain topic. It'll be very interesting to see how this unfolds. Well, and you've been following it for, for a little bit now since you, uh, you know, you mentioned it. And then to get to sit down and talk to someone that is with Smoke Matters gets to explain a little bit, gives you a better understanding of what they all have going on, what they're trying to do, and, you know, just go from there. But you're going to be behind the scenes, and that's pretty awesome. That's right. We're going to cover the full story when it comes to this movement in all sides of this. And so it's going to be pretty awesome. So stay tuned with the Truck Boss Show because we're going to bring it all to you. That's right. Well, we're all over the place and we're always here to bring the good stuff to you. So, but speaking of good news, today being a very special day, day of love, Valentine's Day, February 14th is a big day all over. And you know, truckers have love stories too. Here goes a little video that you can see for yourself about all our drivers that are out on the road that experience some type of love. Check this out. She picked me up at the morgue. I was the mortician. No, I'm just kidding. No, I picked you up on the side of the road, 201 yeah. in Wyoming. Thank right. you. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. So this is her. She, she's my, I can't say she's my replacement. I got her right before my other baby died, and, and she's just kind of been from there on. She's the continuation. All day long, you, you run into guys like, I wouldn't drive a weekend with my wife in the truck. I would, that's the last thing I would do. I can't wait to get out of the house when I get home or, you know, things like that. Yeah, you, but, do, you do hear a lot of that. But, you know, when, when you're together for a long time, you know, you become each other's best friends, so to speak. And obviously, obviously not everybody has that same relationship, but, uh, you know, and, and it's like I tell people, you can't be together 20, because we have our, discussions, you know, so to speak. And you can't be together 24 seven and not get mad about something here, but the biggest thing is how soon you get over it. Yeah. You know, she'll get mad, I'll get mad, you blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, well, where do you want to eat tonight? You know, you just kind of get it out and, and it, it works for us, so. Oh, um, I just tell her, you know, look out the window and enjoy the view. It's kind of hard when your eyes are shut. But. She can be a critic sometimes. She was a communicator in the Navy and she still communicates. Let me tell you, I woke up one time and he's outside with this thing that says, think safety. And I'm looking at him. And you know how the cows are all roaming around? He's trying to catch a cow to put it up underneath there to get the cow to look at him so he can get that picture. Yeah. To have my dog. You know what I mean? Uh, so um, again, a, a lot of people say that that's a, I, I talk to her like she's a person. You know, but um, as a uh, point of security, um, and then also there's been times where, you know, I've been shut down in places, you know, for days, and if I didn't have her out there with me, I don't know what I would have done that kind of way. So it, it, it is a form of companionship, you know, um, also security. I have a pit bull, you know, she's nice, you know, but she'll take care of mama if she needs to. And we'll just live a working retirement style. So we go out and we'll run three months away from home, go back, you know, while we're on the road, we, we're we not hardcore, you know, we kind of do what we want, when we want, and when we get there, we stay as long as we want, and when we're tired or bored, then we just look for another load going someplace else that we want to go and hang out there. And see family. Maybe see family. Go and see our families, they're spread out in different states, yeah. and so we'll just go and see everybody. And I was cooking them breakfast one day, right? Okay, scrambled eggs, little sausage patties, little sausage patties, right? And I was buttering his toast and everything. And the TV was down because he loves Fox and Friends, right? So he's over there and he's, he's listening. All of a sudden they said something and he comes running. I took, because the bed was down. So I took his plate with scrambled eggs and little sausage patties, right? And I set it on the bed. You figure you would walk back from the, 
from the cab of the truck and you would see it. He was so engrossed in what they were saying on the TV, he turns around looking at the TV like this and sets down on top of it. I turn around and I have my toast with his jelly on it and I'm looking at him like, stand up. And he hops back up. He had the perfect little round sausage thing Grace. stuck to yeah. his butt. I laughed. Yeah. Now that was pretty cute. Yeah. So uh, I'm coming out. He didn't out think it was funny, but yeah, I thought it was hilarious. Coming out with the designer jean <laughs> print of grease sausage on my rump. The perfect imprint of a sausage patty. Well, happy Valentine's Day to you and to everyone that's out there watching us and to all your family and friends. Happy Valentine's Land, and I happy hope that Valentine's. you bought your wife something really nice. If you not, know what I did, you'd be proud. Okay, I, I we, took care you of better her. be. You and hopefully, better be, we'll find out tonight. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> no, 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 because that's Where's not going to. We're not going there. Okay, um, we're just going to have a great day. Let's just leave it at that. I'm blessing now, but here on the Truck Boss Show. We're gonna have a good hey, time. Hey, it's nothing but I'm love not here. That. Why am but, I saying that? No, I don't know, but you know what? Let, let me let, let's talk about a little bit about our truckers. You know, it's amazing how much love there is out on the road, whether it's with family, with your pet. Pet, they give a lot of love, they you know. Do. And I, you know, I have a pet of, you know, we have a baby at home. It's our little pet. My kids love him. He is a brat, but you know, you <laughs> do treat brat. you treat your your puppies, your your pets as as one of your other you know That's children, it. and you talk to them that way, like the the ladies. Hey. She talks to her dog the same way. Hey, we have three dogs, love them. They're like our family. So. And our drivers are lonely sometimes out there on the that's road. True. And I think that's really neat. And I love the couple. The couple, you know, where he says that they eventually become you, your best friends. And that, right. I think that that's what a relationship is about, the, the partnership, the marriage. And the oh, other right. one was just funny. She picked him up on the side of the road. Yeah, fun statistic <laughs> for you. On Valentine's, it's estimated $21 billion will be spent on gifts. $21 billion. So I wonder anyway, what I'm going to get. Fact. If I get one, I don't know. We'll Who see. Knows? Well, happy Valentine's Day from us. Yes. So we have an important show, exciting show next week as well, where we're bringing nutrition and we promised Hollywood. Yes, Who do we, we spend did. time with in Hollywood? Oh, my God, with the trucker. That's right. So they we're, were so much fun. They were. Oh. They were a lot of fun. You definitely want to stay tuned. We'll bring that to you live next Thursday, as always, here on the Truck Boss Show. And if you don't know why we do this. Because you're the boss. <laughs>